Well, hey neighbors, welcome to the Shed Shop and this edition of How To. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove your flywheel from your steel MS200T chainsaw and your coil from your steel MS200T chainsaw. Okay, neighbors, unfortunately, if my memory serves me properly, on the MS200T, if we want to get our coil completely off, we have to remove that pesky spark plug boot. And those can be difficult to get on and off. Uh, we've got all our plastics so far going through the ultrasonic parts washer, neighbors. Here's your MS200T. The saw is for sale. It's got an OEM steel top end. We haven't looked at the heart yet. But look at your parts, neighbors. They came out real good. This saw is apparently a one owner saw and has only been run like three times. Okay, Chainsaw Redeemer got it <laughs> because Daddy said, screw you, daughter's ex-boyfriend. I'm selling your chit. I don't remember the boyfriend's in jail or disappeared or something. And it's been a long time. So Dad finally decided, hey, daughter, give me that saw. That's got bad blood. We're going to sell that chit. I guess that's what happened. Chainsaw Redeemer got it. He's had the steel dealer run the serial number. It's not stolen. I've run it through every database. I always do. I told him. He even gave me a picture of his driver's license. Neighbor Kevin. He said, here, I promise you it is what it is. And then he sells me his 361 for really cheap. What a great neighbor. And we sat there and talked for a while. He's a fellow tinkerer. He knew what he had. He knew he was giving me a hell of a deal. But I think he knew I needed it. Here's your parts, neighbor. Look how clean they are, neighbor. Here you go, neighbor. Okay. Got in all the crevasses, neighbor, and everything. Okay, neighbor? Look at that, neighbor. That's a clean neighbor. Okay. I got your sticker off, neighbor. There was a parts sticker, okay? An inventory sticker on this still. I got it off for you. Don't worry. Okay. Cleaned all your parts real nice. Okay. So, I'm going to turn you down to the bench, and we're going to take off the flywheel, and... We're going to take out the coil. I ordered, just to show you, when I worked on this saw, the flywheel puller that's supposed to fit this damn saw, Holtz Forma did me dirty. This doesn't fit any of the models. They say it does. Okay? So, Forma Tech, shame on you. You send me a broken fucking handle for a steel MS250. I wait two weeks for it. And now I have a $325 bill tied up because I'm waiting on another handle, damn it. You did me dirty. You did me dirty on this. Shame on you. Okay, let's turn down to the bench, neighbors. It's the middle of the night. Chainsaw Redeemer is going to keep going because he's got to make money, neighbors. Okay? Okay, here's your MS200T, neighbors. For this job, for me, I'm going to have a pair of pliers. I prefer needle nose. You don't always need to use pliers, but I find it's, it's much easier to just grab the flywheel, and it seems to pop every time. You're also going to need your 13 mil. Um socket I think the half inch fits this saw better I thought all steel flywheel nuts were 13 mil but that's very loose on there so I'm going to go ahead and use the half inch it's easier for me to reach anyways neighbors okay and then you you need either uh, to be able to hold this flywheel tight like this and use an impact or with your wrench or you also need to uh, put some rope down in your piston there okay through your spark plug port you just tie a knot in your rope I have 50,000 of these neighbors. Here you go. So sorry. You just tie a knot in your rope like that and put it down in there. But I have the special piston stop for this. And usually if you buy a sprocket for one of these saws, if you buy it directly from steel, it will usually come with your piston stop. Okay. And so we're going to go ahead and put that down in there. Get it turned the right way. Get our, get our thing tightened up here. Okay. And this is not reverse threaded like your clutch, okay? And then I'm just going to take my ratchet. Oh, I don't think my piston stopped set good. No, it did not, neighbors. Okay, I'm trying to help it. I'm trying to do it so you can see. Bear with me, neighbors, okay? We'll get her. Just got to persevere, that's all. It's not wanting to, uh, I don't like to break these piston stops because they ain't cheap. Okay, there we go. Our nut came loose. Now, the thing with this is, 
these flywheel nuts you can't you can't just hit um they're not like the ones that you can just use your socket and hit your socket which have what i guess i call a built-on washer okay see with that yeah see that's a 13 mil okay with that you can hit your socket with this one you can't you can directly hit your bolt you just have to have a good swing okay so that's what we're going to do we're going to get a little hammer and sometimes I know guys that can just grab it and tap it, okay? And I also know guys that they can just sit here and go ping and the vibration gets their flywheel loose. With me, I don't want to have to hit it any more than I than I need to. And so I like to just go ahead and, and start right off the bat with just kind of lifting the saw up by the flywheel. Just like that, neighbors. That's all you gotta do, okay? So now that's how you get your flywheel off and then you slide it off. Okay, neighbors, this has got a key. You don't want to lose your key. Okay. They usually stay in there pretty good. Um, I've got extras. I'm going to, I'm going to leave the key on for now. Okay, neighbors. I don't like to take them out unless they come out easy. And this one is in there. No, it is pretty loose actually. So we're going to take it out. The best thing I can tell you is either if you're not washing this, I'm going to wash this. I don't want my flywheel key disappearing. Uh, you can stick it to your magnet, and it usually won't go nowhere in an ultrasonic bath, but a bunch of crud builds up around it. Neighbors, I'm just going to put it in a bag. And if you put it in a big bag, you won't lose it. If you put it in a little bag, you might lose it. So this is a 3-inch by 5-inch Ziploc, okay? And then I'll just put that with my other parts. We don't want to lose that. That's not a cheap part. And uh, it's not something that they usually have on hand for some reason. You would think they would, but they don't. All right, so next, our coil. Neighbors, you just get uh, your T27, your standard T27 wrench for a steel, okay? And then you're going to have your two T27 bolts. Okay. Go and get that loose. And you got to unplug your wire here. For me, I usually have to have assistance with it because of my arthritis. Okay, there we go. Get our wire out of the way. Loosen our other bolt here. The only part I didn't have for this saw was this AV mount. The only one online is like over $25. And although I don't have to put a ton of money into this saw, it seems, as long as the heart's good, I did notice some uh, initial surface scores on the piston. And I think that's just because the saw hadn't been started in a long time. That happens a lot. People let stuff sit. And, and just like neighbor Aaron, neighbor Ace, Ace Aaron, <laughs> uh, the the one that's going to buy this saw, neighbor, here's your 200T, neighbor Ace, when neighbor Eric comes to pick up his two uh, 028s. Anyways, so I ordered a set of three aftermarkets, and I'm just going to include an extra one with the saw. Okay, and then what happens is you can lift your coil out, but see, they fed it through the chassis on this one, okay, the metal chassis. You come over here, and it's on the other side. Now, you've got to pop this off. Okay, now I, I, I wasn't going to take my coil all the way off, but I'm going to do it for purpose of the video. Um, my spark plug boot is just slippery. I might not be able to, neighbors. I'm so sorry because I, I do struggle with this stuff because of my arthritis. Uh, but you've got to pop this clip off. And there, there are videos on how to remove the spark plug boot. Some people pull it up. Some people go down and, and pull it through like this. You just got to be careful. I personally... Like with this one, it's it's not wanting to come up or, or slide down. It's just kind of stiff. Okay? Pull it out like that. Okay? You unhook this little spring from your... Goodness. Okay, I'm going to have to get my clip off here. It's not so easy when you have arthritis and carpal tunnel and nerve damage all at the same time. Okay. And then, this one, I like how they've done it. It's down inside the sleeve. But essentially, we have no choice if we want to get it out. I don't personally want to take the whole thing out. I know the spring doesn't pass through the chassis, if I remember right. The only problem is, I can't tell. Yeah, this is, this is electrical taped on, actually. So somebody's electrical taped this. That's fine. We'll put heat shrink on it, is what I like to do. I like to put a piece of heat shrink. Okay, so that just sticks in your sticks in your coil wire like that and it, it sticks into the core of the wire and that's what sends your spark and then you just slide your boot off uh don't lose your stuff neighbors keep track of it that stuff's not cheap okay and then all you got to do is simply 
pull that wire through. Okay. And then the final thing you've got to do is unplug that right there after you've pulled your wire out through your chassis there and we've removed our spark plug boot. And that's it. You can leave that wire in there. It's also connected under the handle. I will end up taking this out. But neighbors, this is hard to fish up and through. Okay, uh, it's, it's just not easy. And so my recommendation is you leave it right where it is. Okay, that's my recommendation. Don't try to feed it through all of that. It's difficult. I leave it right where it is. There's no reason unless you're replacing that. And we'll have to do that video for, the, for you in the future. That's going to be it, neighbors. Again, the saw is going to be for sale. You saw how clean it is. Uh, the rest of it's going to be that clean. We're going to open up the heart. It's a steel OEM top end, which I love. Uh, it's very clean. The muffler wasn't even that dirty. It has a sticker on it still. And so we're just going to keep going with this saw tonight, neighbors. We're going to continue to take things apart, put it in the ultrasonic parts washer. We'll show you how to rebuild the carburetor. We're also going to show you how to disassemble everything inside here. I'm going to open it. I if, if it's very clean in there, which I have a theory it is, I'm not going to take it all out. OK, um, it's very it's a lot to contend with. There's so many pieces in there and you can see uh, I do believe I have a video up of the 192 T that I did the assembly in there. And this one is very similar. OK, so until next time, neighbors, be kind to one another. Hey, hit the thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already, because then you'll be eligible for the free chainsaw giveaways uh, that are upcoming. And uh, you can go to Confessions at the Parts Washer playlist. And I did your dirty Husqvarna chainsaw giveaway. That's an eligible 240. Uh, all you got to do is follow three simple steps in that video. And then any video I mentioned, the 017, like this video. Hey, neighbors, all you got to do is be a subscriber, like this video, or any video that I mentioned the Steel 017 giveaway in. And you're automatically entered. And when we hit 200, and oh, and you have to comment on the video as well. So sorry, that's the third step. Subscribe, like any video I mentioned, 017 in, and comment on said video as well. And when we hit 250 subscribers, you'll automatically have at least one entry for a free drawing. It's shit's free, neighbors. I'm gonna ship it to you free. I'm gonna build it for you free, and it's yours free. Okay. And I think I might even give you a rednecked handle just because it's a really good fix and I really admire it. And it's a free chainsaw, so why the hell not? Okay, you can handle a, a, a bracketed handle. Okay, neighbors, until next time, be kind to one another. Everyone's facing a battle.